how do we first begin to present the gospel to a non-believer? So I hope today that that question will be answered and, um, and hope, hopefully you guys are encouraged. Um, I want to do a little recap on the last episode, um, just really quickly. Uh, I went over why we ought to preach the gospel and mainly because for one, we are commanded by Christ. Secondly, it is the means that God has chosen to use to save sinners. It's the means of it's a means of grace. Um, and when people hear you preach, that's what that's what God uses to save sinners. And um, and it's it's a privilege that we could take part of that. And and lastly, as far as the why, uh, why we should preach is that um, we should really consider Paul's attitude. Woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. So, with that being said, um, I don't think we we should really talk about whether or not we should preach the gospel. It's a, it's a matter of when and how, right? Um, but also, it, once we know what the gospel is and how to present it, it gives us confidence because the second point I went over was that the gospel is not about us. It's not about us. It's not about um, it's not about our testimony being you know this dramatic crazy life story where uh you know we were in gangs and uh we and there was drugs involved and you know and all this all this crazy stuff uh some people feel like if they don't have a story like that then they don't have a powerful testimony and it's, that, that's just not true in fact um i think those who emphasize on those things those who boast about their wickedness when they're testifying about the Lord, I think they they are um, misdirected and um, and should be taught how to give a testimony in a way that glorifies God. Um, a testimony is when you testify about Christ and how He saved you. That's what a testimony is. So we can have confidence because Christ saved you the way how He saved you. He saved you as a sinner who you were undeserving, you did not earn salvation, you were wicked and yet he saved you okay um, there's no room for boasting and um and the last point was it's the power of god the gospel is the power of god god god's power is revealed when you preach the gospel and sinners hear it, it it's, it's actually a powerful thing to know that because it's not about how eloquent you are or how um, bold you are it, it's it's all about the power of god and when you preach the gospel so I just think that's amazing. Today, I want to go over basically how do we preach the gospel? Where do we start? When when should we start preaching the gospel? So I want to start with uh, first reading um, what Paul wrote to Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter two, starting in verse one. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by His appearing and His kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry so clearly um, the, the part that I want to emphasize on is preach the word be ready in season and out of, and out of season and in other words always be ready to preach the word there should never be a time when we want to lay down the gospel we should always be ready you know obviously Paul was prepping Timothy he, 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 he was he was directing them into a certain kind of ministry right but the principle still stands. We should always be ready. One of the biggest problems Christians face today is that they believe they still have time. So many Christians did not preach the gospel today because they truly believe that they have tomorrow to preach it. And many have not have not heard the opportunity have not had the chance to hear the gospel when they could have. I'm not talking about third world countries where the name of Jesus has never been mentioned. I'm talking about here in a place where where we hear the gospel quite regularly. We have to be ready 
in season and out of season. When we have the opportunity to preach the gospel, we should take it. Um, in fact, we should be praying. We should be praying for for opportunities to preach the gospel. Okay, and um, but but that kind of begs the question, right? In the last in the last episode, I kind of left you on a little cliffhanger. I didn't really explain what is the gospel. Okay, because again, I, I think I went over what the gospel is not. Right, it's not about a crazy life story that could be a movie. It's not about um, it's not about God will make you rich or healthy. It's not the prosperity gospel, which I'm not going to I'm not going to go for that. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm hoping most of you will agree that that's a false gospel. But uh, but what is the gospel? Um, well, there's one there's one passage in the Bible that I think it's it's a go to passage, and it should be something that uh, we should memorize. And, and consider when we, whenever we create these kind of lessons on how to preach the gospel. That's First uh, Corinthians chapter fifteen, starting in verse one. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I have also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on a third day in accordance with the scriptures. And the rest of the chapter talks about the resurrection and why it's very important. I, I, I just want to emphasize verse, uh, verse uh, I believe it's verse 1. Now I would remind you brothers of the gospel I preached to you, right? And then he explains, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died, that he was buried, he rose on a third day, okay? I, I don't want to make this into a minimal gospel or um, or something where, you know, if someone just believes just those things, they're, they're definitely saved, but that's definitely a starting point on where we can go from here. Um, when, when we preach the gospel and we know that it's the gospel that's going to change somebody, it's the gospel that's going to actually save it's the gospel that, that has the power of god when, when, when we know how serious that is we don't want to mess it up so first corinthians 15 1 through 4 it's a good starting point for one we know okay well obviously it's about christ and it's about his death and it's about his resurrection those are three things right christ came christ died christ resurrected in principle that's the gospel. Christ came, Christ died, Christ resurrected. That's the gospel, and in in probably in the most purest form. And by pure, I, I just mean simplest form. I have a basically a five-part message. Uh, whenever I engage with non-believers, I have these five steps. I already told you three of them. Okay, Christ came, Christ died, Christ resurrected. That's the gospel message. But the first point is the guilt of sin. And the last point is our response, which is uh, faith and repentance. So all five points are we are guilty of sin, Christ came, Christ died, Christ resurrected, and faith and repentance. And those are the five points that, that I think about. You know, if, if you want to think of like bullet points, right, in your mind as you're, as you're preaching the gospel, um, I, I go straight through those, okay? So the first thing I talk about is the guilt of sin. Now, there are tons of scripture that prove this, and um, so, but I'm only going to go over a few. Uh, scripture says that we are all guilty of sin. Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we, Jew are we Jews any better off? No, not at all. For we have already charged that all, both Jews and Greeks, are under sin, as it is written, None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God. All have turned aside, together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. John chapter 3, starting at verse 19. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world that people loved darkness, loved the darkness, rather than the light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his works should be exposed. So that explains our condition, 
our condition as sinners, we are all guilty of sinning against God. There's one, there's one passage I like to read too, as far as, you know, m maybe we don't think we're as bad as, as we think. Well, let's read James chapter two, starting at verse 10. For whoever keeps the whole law, but fails in one point, has become guilty of all of it. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. One more time, verse 11. For he who said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder. If you do not commit adultery, but do murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. In other words, God gave you a law, or God gave laws, right? And if you break one law, you are sinning against the one who gave that law. Okay, so it doesn't really matter if you if if you just sinned one time. That the point is is that once you sin, you are sinning against the lawgiver, and for that, there's going to be eternal consequence. How do we? How do you show this to a non-believer? And and there are many ways. I I, I find the way the uh, the way of the master, uh, living waters, you know Ray Comfort and uh, Todd Frail um, and these other guys. I find I find their way pretty effective. You just gotta walk them through the law, okay? So you could tell the non you could tell the non-believer, have you ever told a lie? Have you ever dishonored your parents? Have you ever looked at someone with lust? Have you ever hated anyone? You know, so you can literally go through the entire law and every law, every commandment they broke. You know, and, and we can conclude that you know we are sinful, hateful, lovers of sin haters of God we are guilty of sin that would be the conclusion that we get to that we are guilty of sin so um, and, and that's that's the first part of my message okay again there's five parts right first one is we are guilty of sin uh, the second one third and fourth is that Christ came Christ died and Christ resurrected and then lastly faith and repentance so that was just the first part we are guilty of sin it's important that we have to emphasize that and it's never it's never pleasant you know um people are super defensive but that's okay it's expected okay the bible already tells us how the non-believer thinks they're enslaved to sin you know their minds have been darkened um they hate the haters of god they hate the light and they love darkness but we still got to tell the truth Okay, and we pray that through telling them the truth, their hearts are softened, and and that um that God can save them. Okay, because although they are guilty of sin, there's still a phrase I just love to I love to read, but God. And there have been so many sermons produced off that one phrase, but let's go to Ephesians chapter two, and uh, and, and and read what it says, verse one. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind. And we were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. Verse 4. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us even when we were dead in our trespasses made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus for by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. Amen. Technically, this episode was dedicated to the bad news. Okay, but now we're just arriving to the good news. But as for next time. All right, guys. If, if if you if you liked, loved, or, or were somewhat edified by this episode, um, I, I just ask that you subscribe uh, to the podcast and um, and and follow me 
on uh, Saints Edified on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. I try to uh, post a lot of content regarding evangelism and apologetics and theology, uh, some encouragement. That's all I got for you guys today. Until next time. So, Lydia Gloria.